I'm Parmender. I'm the director and the principal physical therapist at Move Physio. The topic of discussion for today is preventing falls in elderly. So, uh, the falls in elderly, it's a very serious issue and it can lead to various uh, types of fractures or injuries, sprains and strains in elderly and can be quite troublesome. Um, so the, uh, the fractures which can happen due to falls can be around the hip region, around the hand, wrist, um, there can be various muscle strains, sprains, um, uh, even a uh, traumatic brain injury can happen. So it can be quite debilitating uh, for a person um, and uh, um, there are quite some people who even die due to fall so it's quite serious and according to NCOA that is National Council on Aging one in four Americans um, of 65 years of age or above that they fall every year so that makes it quite serious and also um, once a person falls the the consequences can be quite serious they, they might be uh, going through a lot of troubles like uh, they might uh, become um, uh, depressed they they are dependent on others family members for for all the uh, household activities um, they have very limited um, uh, like you know um, um, uh, abilities to perform all their activities of daily living so it can be quite troublesome for a person and especially an elderly person um, to face this uh, so there are quite a lot of risk factors which can lead to falls in elderly and uh, based on those risk factors, we can also manage uh, uh, or prevent uh, these faults in elderly. So what are these uh, risk factors? So um, uh, we, can, uh, we can talk about uh, various risk factors which are related to behavioral factors, like lack of exercises in elderly. So uh, whenever a person grows old, there are changes, there are physiological changes which happen. The muscle mass reduces, uh, there is a weakness. Um, in the joint there can be some aches and pains in the joints uh, there can be some degenerative ch changes uh, happening so all this leads to muscle weakness and like you know uh, um, there is uh, there is a weakness in the legs which can lead to more of um, falls in elderly and also there's a one condition which they call it sarcopenic obesity so uh, what is sarcopenia is the age related loss of muscle mass and along with the muscle mass there is also uh, there is a reduction in the muscle function muscle quality uh, muscle performance so overall uh, the functioning is um, kind of poor for them uh, the muscle function is poor for them so uh, for that we need to make a plan for elderly so how can we manage that we we have to make a plan for elderly where they can perform different exercises which can improve their strength their flexibility their coordination um, uh, their balance so uh, when we take care of all these factors the chances of falls in elderly uh, they, uh, it reduces um, all right so the other factors which can lead to falls um, can be um, alcohol consumption okay there can be uh, multiple medications so um, uh, a doctor has to evaluate all the medication which you are taking because there can be some kind of interactions going on or uh, somebody might be on antidepressant which are kind of sedative so they reduce your uh, cognitive functioning so that can be a cause uh, where falls can happen all right and besides that um, if a person wear inappropriate clothes or shoes so uh, that can also lead to um, falls okay the next one is uh, socioeconomic factors so there are various uh, socioeconomic factors which can lead to fall false uh, although um, uh, VPTs might not be able to help them directly there but if people who are living um, um, in, in, in small houses uh, who have uh, poor level of education, lower level of education, who have um, low income source, who are um, um, not well connected with the community, so the community resources in their area are less. Um, although we are, um, uh, we all have access to social media and internet in today's time, so the community factor might not be that much um, contributing to it, but yeah. Um, so next one is your environmental factors so if a building is kind of poorly constructed it can lead to falls in elderly there can be slippery slippery floors slippery staircases 
okay, um, the sidewalks which can be cracked. And in India, uh, we can talk about potholes. So uh, everyone is prone to uh, falls because of those, uh, not just the elderly. Okay, so besides that, if there is uh, improper lighting in the house, uh, that can lead to falls in, for uh, elderly people. Okay, next is the physiological factors. So um, what are those factors which can lead to falls? So if you have any kind of dizziness, which can or cannot be related to neck pain, um, there can be, um, uh, um, if your eyes and ears are not functioning properly, again, that can lead to, um, like, you know, faults in the elderly. If you have low BP issues, so uh, whenever you're getting up uh, from the bed, there can be a sudden, um, uh, uh, the blood pressure can lower suddenly, and it can lead to um, faults. Um, besides that, uh, there can be gait and balance disorders, which can be linked with some kind of neurological conditions like Parkinsonism or um, stroke. So if a person falls uh, repetitively, uh, again, he or she needs to talk to the doctor because there can be some underlying uh, neurological issues going on for which he might need some kind of therapy. All right. Uh, so how, when, how can we manage uh, these conditions or uh, these uh, risk factors? So um, um, your medications should be evaluated by the doctor. So if you are taking any medication which are making you prone to falls, they should be avoided. Uh, your eyes and ears should be examined. So if you need any kind of aids, get them. Okay. And uh, exercise plan, again, um, as we have talked about sarcopenic obesity, uh, you might need to work on your muscles to make them function properly. So um, yeah, exercise plan can help you there. Um, then next again, um, uh, home safety. So if there are any kind of rugs, any kind of uh, slippery stuff or um, over which you, you might um, um, like you know or stumble upon so even animals inside the house can make you fall so take care of all these things then there can be home hazard evaluation which can be done for your home where um, a professional can evaluate what all risk factors are there inside the house and what all things can be moved around so and also some other kind of adjustments like um, handrails can be uh, fixed inside the house and can um, uh, any kind of um, grass uh, sorry grab bars can be um, put into the uh, like you know uh, restroom so all these things can help you in um, uh, preventing falls okay also wear uh, proper clothes and uh, proper shoes um, lightning inside the house it's a kind of a big factor um, so um, have proper lighting inside the house and also don't make elderly people get up from very low surfaces because they don't have uh, like kind of uh, enough strength in their hands and like legs to to do that so if they get up from a higher surface it's kind of easier for them okay uh, then uh, there are some studies which uh, have shown that pilates is kind of really good for elderly people so uh, if they do pilates training there there can be uh, more uh, the balance is improved their arm strength is improved and also their um, ability to uh, balance themselves in the static position like simply standing position and um, during the dynamic activities like if they are like doing some activities so uh, while walking um, or um, reaching out for something so uh, all these muscle activation or the muscle activity uh, around the um, body changes if they do the pilates training and they can actually help themselves um, uh, avoiding uh, any kind of falls okay next is uh, uh, diet modification or diet changes um, um, if you are overweight or obese again there is a high likelihood you, that you might fall um, so uh, try to reduce your weight um, and also vitamin D uh, if there's a deficiency of uh, vitamin D or other um, um, minerals so get yourself evaluated examined and then get them and uh, proper balance uh, in the diet uh, should be followed uh, for the weight loss 
and uh, for the postmenopausal women uh, they might need some kind of hormone therapy because they again go through so many changes in in their body um so uh, again they are prone to falls and uh, lastly the diabetic uh, the people who are diabetic who are having hypertension any kind of heart conditions or um, who are having the again obesity osteopenic obesity um in elderly where where fat is more and muscle mass is less so that's the osteopenic obesity and any kind of degenerative joint disorder so all of these uh, need to be evaluated and then uh, you need to make a proper plan of uh, treatment for them um so that the chances of falls in elderly are um, very less okay uh so with that um yeah that was quite quick um so yeah we can take care of elderly um uh, in in and around um, our homes and um, during this pandemic i think you know, we all have to be very careful um towards kids towards kid, uh, elderly people so um yeah you can take um um yeah you can you can uh, call me for further information or if you want to want someone to get evaluated uh we can help the person out we have different uh, like you know uh evaluation measures which we can use and uh, then we can train the people and improve their functioning um uh, their overall functioning so with that i would like to end this facebook live session thank you for your time and i will see you soon thank you